if you have your Bibles, will you turn with me to the book of Psalms? Psalms number 92. Psalms number 92. Those of you that are viewing us, amen, we would ask that you would have your Bibles with you tonight. Amen. And that you would turn with us to the book of Psalms number 92, verse number 12. When you have it, will you say amen? I didn't hear nobody on my left side. I said, when you have it, say amen. Thank you so much. Psalms number 92, verse number 12. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree, and he shall grow like the cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God, and they shall still bring forth fruit in old age, that they shall be fat and flourishing. To show that the Lord is upright, he is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Can I read verse number 12 again? The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree, and he shall grow like the cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Before you take your seat, look at somebody and say, focused forward. Have your seat just for a few minutes. Focused forward. It is necessary that before we talk about 2023, that we must recount where we have come from. I believe that it is always necessary that before you enter into a new year, you have to be reflective about where you've come from. And surely many of us have a testimony that God has been good to us. Now, I like talk back. So somebody say amen or something. Amen. And so it is then, as we look back into the year of 2020, we realize we entered into a new decade. One of the things that the decade represented was that it was the year or the decade of the open mouth. Immediately following into that, we went into something that many of you had never experienced called a pandemic. It was there that we were shut down and shut out from normal lifestyles. We were removed from our companies. We were removed from our places of work. Many of us did not have an opportunity to see our families, but God intended it. Uh, Somebody talk back to me and say, God intended it. Uh, There's nothing that ever happens that God has no intention of doing. And for many of us, we must come to the realization that it was not just something that he thought of out of the cloud, but it was already in the plan. And one of the reasons that I believe that God did this to us is because we, as the body of Christ, we had become limp and weak. Somebody say limp and weak. Uh, we had become a people that we would come to church, but we really didn't have a praise unless we were getting something out of the deal. We had come to a place that we had forgotten what real worship looked like. Uh, and I've come to realize that more and more, God is a jealous God. Uh, somebody talk back to me and say, God is a jealous God. Uh, and that's why you have to put in first. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Look at somebody and say, even in 2023, he's got to be first. It is then as we look at this now, we must realize that God processed us because the reality is if you didn't get closer to God in 2021 and 22, then you missed the whole purpose of why we were shut up and shut down. Now, tap somebody and say, I had to go back and learn how to worship some more. I had to go back and learn how to pray again. I had to go back and realize that everybody that said that they were my friend really wasn't my friend, but I realized that I had a friend in Jesus. Some Somebody just talk back to me for a few minutes. And so it is now that we are here in this 2023 year that we must realize, somebody say realize, uh, that God was working on all of us. Uh, He has now brought us to this moment in time. And we must understand that everybody is not going along. Uh, Oh, can somebody talk to me over here? Everybody is not going along. The Bible says that the weed and the tear grow together and God does the separating look at somebody and say, stop mourning over those people that don't call you no more. Stop crying about those things that are not happening the way that you wanted it to happen. But realize that you have entered into a new season in God. Somebody clap your hands and give God a great praise in this house. It is then that as we realize that we have been separated, I heard, I think it was Peter said, we are a chosen generation and a royal priesthood. Take somebody and say everything everything. You can come to 
the church, but everybody doesn't have a worship. Everybody can have a praise, but worship. Worship said, I love you when you ain't done nothing. Worship says, I'm in love and all shook up. Worship say, I study your word. I believe your word. I'm tied to your word. I wish I had a worship in here. It is that he seeks for worship us, and then we must then understand that as we have now come into this 2023 year, that there are some necessary things that you must understand. Now, you must understand that everybody can't hang out with you. Tag somebody and say, everybody, everybody. I can't go to dinner with everybody. I can't talk to everybody. I can't be on social media. I'm going to talk to y'all over here. I can't be on social media 24 hours a day and only spend six minutes with God. I've got to be in a place that God can use me. I've got to be in a place where God can know that I'm available. Somebody scream back at me and say, yes, Lord. It is then that we must understand that it be necessary. Somebody say necessary. Necessary that who I hang out with, they have the capability of sharpening me. Uh, tag somebody and say sharpen me. Uh, that's why you've got to be careful who you talk to. Because this is not the hour that you should be talking about that you're broke, busted, and disgusted. Uh, this is the hour that you should say I've been having more than I've ever had in my entire life. Uh, and I just got started. Uh, this is the season that you should be able to say that what God is going to do is greater than I can ever imagine. This uh, is the season that you need to have an awakening uh, that God has done greater. Uh, tell somebody and say greater, greater, greater. Uh, say I'm not living in the past three years uh, but I've got to go forward. Uh, I think I heard Isaiah say somewhere around chapter number 53 verse 18 he said behold uh, I'm getting ready to do a new thing. Uh, Put those things that are old behind you. Somebody just jump up on your feet and say everything that's old got to go. I've got to get rid of my old thinking. I've got to get rid of my old attitude. I've had a transformation. Somebody turn around and say things are happening for me. I said things are happening for me. Things are turning around for me. Things are getting ready to get better. You've got to be able to decree it if you're going to. Sit down just for a few minutes. I'm almost finished. But you must understand that it is necessary that you gather with people. They can cause you to be better than what you are. Stop talking to people that are still complaining. Stop talking to people that are still murmuring. Tag somebody and say, I don't want to hear it again. I don't want to hear that same story. The Bible says in everything, give him praise. So if I didn't have a good day, he still deserves praise. If things didn't work out the way I wanted, to do, he still deserves praise. If God has been good to you just in the past 24 hours, then he still deserves praise. Dear sin, as we navigate through this, that we must realize that there are some things that cannot come in to this 2023 year. You must realize that the people that you are connected to are an indicator who you are and where you're going. Tag somebody and say it's an indicator of who you are and where you're going. You've got to know without a shadow of a doubt that you've been saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. You need to understand that you are not the same person that you used to be. So Somebody jump up and say, I'm not the same person that I used to be. You wouldn't even like me if you know who I used to be. You wouldn't even talk to me if you knew who I used to be. You wouldn't even sit next to me if you knew who I used to be. Tag somebody and say, so don't bring up my parents. Don't bring it up. Don't talk about what I did. Don't talk about how I did it. Because here Paul says, forgetting those things that are behind me, I press towards the mark of the high calling. Somebody say, where I'm going is great the way I am now. Can I just prophesy? Look at somebody and say, where I am now? You need to check me out in the month of September, because where I am now is not where I will be in the month of September. Can I talk to a prophetic house? You've got to understand that what God is doing in this hour, can somebody and say, it is an accelerated path. Y'all better take a step and say, I feel God pushing me. I'm getting ready to do what I haven't done. I'm getting ready to go. Y'all ain't walking enough. I'm getting ready to walk into some doors that no man can close. And God has already opened. Somebody put a praise on it. Can I talk to the church like I feel this other? 
ignorance. So change somebody and say, you got to change how you think. you got to change how you think about you. Because if you don't change how you think about you, you'll never change how you think about me. Ooh, somebody come back to me. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, whatever has happened to you, I need to tell you that it is behind you. Thank <laughs> you. 
get up and talk to y'all over here. The God that I serve is never weak. Uh, and I don't like really talking about my own church because we think something was wrong with the old church. <laughs> But the one thing that the old church had was faith in God. Y'all ain't helping me. I don't know how I got out here, but I'm going to stay here for a moment. Tag somebody and say, the problem is, you don't believe that God can do it. Y'all better talk to me over here. But tag somebody and say, this is the year that he's going to show you. Better than he can tell you. This is the year. Your enemy 
his speech? Can I help somebody? Will you look at somebody and say, it will soon be cut down? Say, wherever they thought they were going, they didn't realize who they were messing with. Because the Bible says, touch not my anointed. I wish I had some anointed people.
means that they're going to grow. It means that they're going to blossom. It means that their wings are getting ready to be extended. Well, let me go a little further. He says that it's going to be a flourishing moment. And it's going to be like a palm tree. I particularly like Orlando because I'm always in awe by the palm trees. Because no matter how the storm comes or goes, they always have a bounce back. And the reason that God has brought you to this hour is because you're going to flourish. And even when your enemies come up against you, you're going to have a bounce back. I just wish that I had a bounce back. Thank <laughs> you. 
expectations, right? And and I'm asking my son, hey, my son, I said, I said, what are you talking to? And he goes, you know, I want to check on you. And I said, no, this is Saul's dilemma. If I can't hear him, you got to look at him, but then you got to run. Because he'll convince you to come sit next to him. And sit next to him, sit next to you, may not work for you. It might, but it wouldn't work on the righteous side. But it would work against you. So when situations like that happen, you say, God bless you, Elder. And you go running back to the other side. You're going to talk back to me about me. You've got to be right. crazy tree in my backyard and uh, thought about having it cut down possibly. And my landscaper said, don't make no sense to cut it down because we can't find the root. Because the root is so, it's, the root has grown so much until it's so deep and so wide that the tree can't be cut. The reason that he said the righteous shall flourish in the palm tree and the cedar of Lebanon is because when you take on roots, nothing that the enemy throws at you will sing you out of God's view. I wish I had a church up in here. I'm going back to my seat now. But look at somebody and say, I have not lived these past years through a pandemic. And now in 2023, to not receive all that God has for me. Look at me and say, I'm getting ready to get it. 
mid-23. For all of you that said that God gave you a word and it didn't come to pass, I came to tell you he's never late, but he's always on time. Tell somebody and say, he waited for you to get you together. I wish I had a church in here. Look at your neighbor and say, he was waiting for you. I said, he was waiting for you to get focused. He was waiting for you to find that you were who I called you to be. He was waiting for you. And he's getting ready to cause you to flourish and to be faithful. to know that 
that he can take care of me and you at the same time. And so I'm unselfish in this hour. So what I'm getting ready to do is start to praise God for how you're getting ready to flourish. And you're getting ready to be favored. No way praising him yet. Say, I'm getting ready to praise God for the anointing that's getting ready to receive. Try to do 